Hey guys, so next we're doing tongue lesions. So this poster is categorized by different signs and symptoms that can present on the tongue. So we have over here colored lesions of the tongue, um, ulcers that you can find on the tongue, any cause for soreness of the tongue, and then up here in this corner we just have things that can, um, diseases that can cause change in anatomy or size or movement of the tongue as well as change taste. So if we start over here in the corner, uh, we've done a lot of this before. So the first one is candida or thrush, so any opportunistic infection uh, can result in a candle infection, scrapable white lesion on the tongue. Next one is trauma, so frictional keratosis, whether it's a sharp tooth or a denture clasp, tends to happen on the lateral border of the tongue. And then as well, there's the scalloping from occlusal trauma, so if you're biting on your tongue, and you'll find with some patients where they're, if they're missing lower teeth, their tongue will fulfill that, like will fill that space and they'll end up biting on it and you'll get scalloping on the lateral border of the tongue. Um, next one is hairy leukoplakia. So this is again, white lesion, lateral border of the tongue. So all of these, as you can see, they're all just fitting in. So a differential diagnosis on white lesion on the tongue. You'd be able to put all of these in. So hairy leukoplakia is presented in patients with HIV when there's an increase in Epstein-Barr virus. So that's what causes the hairy leukoplakia. So it's always good that if you see a white lesion to rule out HIV and um, potentially do the necessary tests, which is a CD4 count. So how it would present is, yes, vertical corrugations on the lateral border of the tongue. Next one is idiopathic leukoplakia. If you can't like confirmatively diagnose hairy leukoplakia or anything else, you do want to rule out an idiopathic leukoplakia because the lateral border of the tongue and the tongue itself is um, a high risk uh, area for any malignant lesions, so precancerous lesions. Next one is sublingual keratosis. So we have talked about this one is in the ventral of the tongue. You can get a white plaque, it's wrinkly, uh, has a very well-defined border, however it is irregular looking, but yes, ventral of the tongue. And then lichen planus as well can cause, on the dorsum, um, can cause like white stripes, or not stripes, striae, and is associated with depopulation. Keep that in mind because we'll get back to that later. Moving on, so there's red and mixed ones, we'll get to that, but let me just quickly run through other colors so you can get black lesions on the tongue, so black hairy tongue. Hairy tongue or furred tongue, which we'll talk about later, really just comes from patients with soft diets or patients who don't eat, um, who are nil by mouth, so anyone on peg tubes, for example, they don't consume anything in their mouth, so they don't get to scrape off um, papillae from our tongue, so we eat bread, for example, it's an abrasive food, it scrapes our tongue, so that's why our papillae, like, um, are, are normal, are normal. <laughs> However, if you're not scraping it off, it can continue to grow like hair, and then presents as a hairy tongue. So then anything that causes staining, on top of that, so tannins, chlorhexidine, tobacco, you can get a black hairy tongue. Treatment for that is really just reassurance, it's not an issue but you just use a tongue scraper or like a soft toothbrush and brush the tongue. Next ones are thrombocytic purpura and Kaposi sarcoma, both of which are purple lesions that can present on the tongue and they are associated with HIV. So again, rule out HIV um, to make sure that it's not HIV. Thrombocytic purpura can also be caused by other things like leukemias and autoimmune diseases. And then varicose veins, ventral tongue, you can get these like really thick veins and it looks scary, but it's actually just varicose veins. Next one is um, red and mixed lesions. So these are usually red or red and white. So erythema migrans, so geographic tongue. How I remember that is just, I don't know, I always tend to mix it up with erythema multiforme, which is the crusting on the lips and the target lesions. Erythema migrans is geographic tongue, think migrants, migration, geography, geographic tongue, yeah? So 
So that presents with like red depopulation, and then you'll get your normal papillae, which will then present something relatively white. Glossitis, also you get like a redness of the tongue, could be associated with blood deficiencies or antibiotics or um, Kawasaki's or scarlet fever. Then median rhomboid glossitis, which is a candle infection, so you do get on the uh, at the back dorsum of the tongue, you'll get like a red lesion with a white border, and typically, or sometimes, not typically, just sometimes, it can be associated with a kissing lesion where when the tongue hits the palate, you get a mark up there as well. And then erythro erythroplakia, so this was the red velvety lesion that's somewhat depressed so it will be your tongue and then you'll get a depression and it's red velvety that is diagnosed as erythroplakia and it has a very very high risk for malignancy so it's really important that you check it and you biopsy it um, and look for any signs of dysplasia and then squamous cell carcinoma as well can present as red or mixed. From there move on to ulceration so causes for ulceration again trauma you can get Again, the sharp tooth or retentric clasps can cause trauma, which can result in an ulcer. And then drug-induced ulcerations, so nicarandal or phenytoin, I've talked about these before. Recurrent aptostomatitis, so minor major in herpetiform. I think herpetiform is normally palate um, and gingivy. I'm not too sure if they, do, if they do present on the tongue. But if you get a minor one, it will typically be in the front or the lateral border of the tongue. But... Um, a major ulcer will usually present on the dorsum. Betchets and HIV. So remember, even when we talked about ulcers, we did mention that if you find ulcers and if you can't find a reason, it's always important that you rule out betchets and HIV because both of them can present with um, RAS. So betchets you want to check for eyes, um, genitals, skin and joints. And with HIV, you look at the you look at the history, and then you can do a CD4 um, test. And then squamous cell carcinoma, of course, the ulceration uh, you get persistent ulcer and induration, and it's firm, and they usually occur on the lateral border of the tongue. If on the tongue and it's far back, so it's really hard to see, and that's why it's usually not um, not usually, but it's it can be missed very easily. Up here, I put swelling because uh, I didn't know where else to put it, but amyloidosis, which is a disease where a protein called amyloid gets just dumped, dumped, dumped into organs and it can be dumped into, in, into the tongue and you can get like a swelling of the tongue and it's just really important that you rule that out, that it's not amyloidosis because it can be associated with um, tumor of the bone marrow, so myeloma, multiple myeloma, so it's really important that you just rule it out. Soreness of the tongue, moving on, so rule of thumb, infections and depopulation will result in soreness of the mouth. So in terms of infections, I'm not going in order right now, but in terms of infections, so your fungal infections or your candidal infections can cause soreness. So whether it's the median rhomboid glossitis, erythema erythematous candidosis, um, that one's associated with HIV, or um, your antibiotic sore mouth, that one, all of these are uh, candidal infections that can present with soreness. So it's always important that you do like a swab or an oil rinse, smear test, anything to just rule out candida. Then any uh, gloss, uh, depopulation. So depopulation happens in anemic glossitis, and it happens in lichen planus, and it happens in erythema migrans. So the redness that's caused in all of these is because you have like, like a raw tongue, which is what's causing the soreness which is why in terms of management we always say okay avoid the acidic foods and the spicy foods because this can all like flare it up so erythema migrans anemic glossitis you check for for bloods 
uh, iron ferrit uh, sorry iron folate and B12, and then your candidal infections so smears and um, swabs, and then if you can rule those out and there's still soreness of the tongue, then you're thinking okay. Um, obviously look at their past, if there's like a past of radiation or chemotherapy that does result in mucositis and you get soreness everywhere. But if you can't really give like a reason, then you're leaning towards like psychogenic um, reasons, so atypical facial pain or burning mouth syndrome. All of these can cause soreness and of course obviously ulcers will cause soreness, but separate. Boom, 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 and then so changes in anatomy, size, movement, and then other um, problems that can come in the mouth. So in terms of anatomy, you can get growths on the tongue, so papillomas, which can be associated with HPV. You can get traumatic fibromas. You can get warts. So um, patients on. Uh, HIV treatment. It's called HART. I forgot what it stands for. Antiretroviral therapy. Um, something. But when they're on treatment for HIV, they can develop, because of the therapy, they can develop warts in the mouth. So if you can give a reason, then you don't need to worry about it. Otherwise, it could be squamous cell carcinoma, even. You just get a growth, in the, uh, growth on the tongue. Decreased population, so we talked about this, so glossitis, erythema migrans, so geographic tongue, and, um, oh, I wrote glossitis twice, I think I meant lichen planus, so glossitis, erythema migrans, and lichen planus, and then increased population in patients with furred tongue slash hairy tongue, it's the same thing, one's just longer than the other, um, so you'll typically be your elderly patients who can't maybe eat hard, like, you know, abrasive foods, so be on a soft diet, or patients who are no by mouth. And then lobulation and fissuring, so your tongue can get extra lobulated and really fissured, and these will be in patients with xerostomia or Sjogren's. Increase in size, so changes in size, so if you find like you have a bigger tongue, which is called macroglossia, there are several reasons, so it could be an allergic reaction, it could be amyloidosis, as we talked about, very important to rule out. Acromegaly, so a increased growth hormone, could cause just a larger tongue, and then Down syndrome. I think there is this argument that it's not a larger sized tongue, it's just a forward postured tongue. Regardless, it looks larger, so it's still um, important to take into account. And then you can get, with a B12 deficiency, a beefy tongue. Next is movement. So anything that restricts or changes the movement of, of the tongue. So I have up here in this post-it note, which you will be able to zoom in um, on the poster, which you can download below, um, is so the hypoglossal, hypoglossal nerve, uh, your cranial nerve 12 is responsible for motor um, motor is the motor nerve for the tongue I forgot what the word is um, so any any problems with that nerve can cause um, restriction in movement if the patient is tongue tied so ankyloglossia so like that uh, they're I'm forgetting all my words today What's it called? You know what I'm talking about. Thingy. Freedom. Lingual freedom. Um, that can be short and that can cause tongue tie. Squamous cell carcinoma, as soon as it invades, if you have squamous cell carcinoma on the tongue or on the floor of the mouth, if you have deep invasion, remember we talked about um, it invading into the muscles and that's when it becomes carcinoma instead of just severe dysplasia. So once that invasion occurs, you can get um, limited movement of the tongue. Some mucus fibrosis, same thing. So beetle knot and areca nut chewers, beetle quid and areca nut chewers, um, if excessive, they can get 
invasion towards the muscles and then the muscles are replaced with like fibrous tissue and that prevents um, movement. Motor nerve damage we talked about and again amyloidosis does the same. Lastly, and we're almost done, so altered sensation, so any nerve damage to any nerve that provides sensory innervation is the word I was looking for. So <laughs> sensory, um, the posterior third, we have the glossopharyngeal nerve that does sensory and taste. And then anterior um, third, your lingual nerve provides sensory um, innervation and then your corda tympani, which runs with the facial nerve. Um, provides taste. Anyway, any damage to that will cause altered sensation to the tongue. It could be either traumatic, punch in the jaw, or iatrogenic from injections, or um, chlorhexidine, burning mouth syndrome, and radiation all cause like altered taste um, and sensation in the tongue. So yeah, that's it. It's really simple. Um, but just remember, I think if you're given any question on differential diagnoses, like, oh, what causes this? Then you can just really easily just eliminate a lot of things and then just follow do, 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 and make sure you always remember what to rule out first because they're very important. Okay, cool. Looking forward to doing the next one. <laughs> okay, bye.